I've wanted I've wanted to make a video on this topic since perhaps March. I wanted to do it at the time, but I knew that the topic would be a lot more interesting for me to talk about. It may not be as hot a topic in the future, what was then the future, now the present, but I would be able to get more in depth. And that's the whole thing with Hideo Kojima, Konami, and Metal Gear Solid V. If you don't know, Hideo Kojima is a popular video game developer, mostly known for Metal Gear Solid. Around March, he left the company midway, and it caused two of his other projects, Silent Hills and... What was that other one? One of the Castlevania Lord of Shadows games to be cancelled and his name to be removed from the front cover of Metal Gear Solid 5. Usually his name is kind of a selling point. He's like one of those popular movie directors like James Cameron or George Lucas or Ridley Scott. Well, James Cameron's name, back in 09, that thing was advertised heavily for that whack-ass Avatar movie. But that's neither here nor there. Like, I saw this thing, and I was thinking, y'all, I finna play Devil's Advocate right now. You know me, I'm a shitlord. I like doing Devil's Advocate stuff. Like, taking a counter-signal position. Everyone's group thinking to one position. I'm gonna group think to the, this one. I was gonna say this was gonna be my line of reasoning. It's okay that Konami's slapping his name out, even though he's still gonna be working on his project because they don't like giving credit to people who leave their company. They never did. That was never for company policy. If you're working on a game and you leave the company midway, your work is not going to be given fruit in terms of video game credits. You might get some money, but that's about it. <coughs> and an example of this was Suikoden 3. The guy who created the Suikoden series worked on Suikoden 1, 2, and 3. But towards the end of Suikoden 3, he had to leave the company, or he left the company, and the main programmer of that game had to switch to directorial duties. And so, the original director and the creator of the series never got the credit for Suikoden 3, and as a result, you can see the decline in the series from Suikoden 4 onwards and that essentially goes to show you that this is not just something they're doing to be petty this is also company policy now I got a lot of respect for Kojima because he's still gonna be working on the series even after he's left he's gonna essentially be a free agent working on a series that won't be the same if he isn't involved on it and they try to make new installments, it's not going to be the same. He's the heart and soul of that project and those releases. And that was what I was going to go for. That I'm all on Konami for not really putting his name out there. How would you put your name out there for a guy who's about to leave your company? That's like when everyone in the wrestling community was tight when they thought that Brock Lesnar was going to leave the night after WrestleMania 31, and they were putting him in the main event against Roman Reigns. Like They're giving him all this stuff. They're having him be Taker. They're giving him all this glory, and then he's going to bounce the very next day. Same kind of logic. But this is why I'm not going to counter Signal now. Because even though Konami is right in this, they've been wrong about pretty much everything else 
so far that we know of. They have been treating their employees like crap. They have cameras to monitor their movements. And for those of you who don't know, essentially the camera is like monitoring them to see if they're doing anything stupid while they're working and developing the game. Maybe being silly or being too idle or it doesn't matter. The point is that's really uncomfortable for a person being watched. Like as as an example, when I was in public school, I would do a homework assignment not a homework assignment, a classroom assignment, or a test, or a school project. And then the, while I'm doing that, sitting down here doing all that nonsense, the teacher is standing up, looking over my shoulder for an extended period of time. Now, after a while, that's going to get really uncomfortable. You're probably not going to function very well because you're thinking, yo, when is this bitch going to leave? And imagine that, but instead of a bitch, it's a camera. And it's going to be doing this for the rest of your 9 to 5 shift. That is inexcusable. Another thing is the fact that if you take an extra long time of a break or do anything that might be considered off, They'll get on a record speaker, announce your name, say you did this wrong or you did this thing and it was off. And use public shaming tactics if you say a lot of ish about a company or you're on your way out. Or say ish about it like shit on social media or you're on your way out. And people are around you, like still talking to you, still trying to be friends with you. They're going to be shunned. You're definitely going to be shunned for doing all of that. And I'm not going to say anything about that other than the fact that it's really despotic, really tyrannical, and it's abusive. It is abusive behavior that's imposed on everyone regardless of their rank or development stardom in that company. Which means it is by nature totalitarian because it doesn't really care who you are. Everyone in totality is being treated like crap by whoever is like in charge of this on Konami. It's probably not going to be on the game development side. It's most likely the broader spectrum of the company because keep in mind, this isn't just a video game company. It also does very well, if not even more so well, with toys, figurines. I think they have a couple of anime programs. I'm not too sure. That could just be being a stereotypical asshole. A shit lawyer, if you will. But yeah, that's inexcusable. And the reason that gets rid of my point is, okay, why do you think Hideo is leaving this company to begin with? He's probably leaving this company because he doesn't want to deal with this. He, he knows he's too big for this. He knows he's too real for this. And we know Hideo. Hideo is the biggest shit lord out there. He doesn't give a damn. He's not going to take this kind of crap. So he's probably bouncing because of that. So to me, not having his name on the front cover, that's appropriate. But if there's any reason why he's leaving, it's not a midlife crisis. It's not him trying to expand his talents to other companies and start all over. That start all over stuff is for like, really psychologically messed up people. He knows Konami is where it's at for him, but he's not going to deal with this crap. So he's going to stick with Metal Gear. He was thinking of doing Silent Hills in some spiritual successor fashion with someone else. 
but his partner in that team project, he's demoralized and he's like doesn't want to work on the gaming anymore. And that's essentially how the cookie crumbles. So there's that issue, and you, I could have ended the video right here on that. But then there's the fact that all of this is essentially the biggest advertising spectacle for Metal Gear Solid 5. You would think that the Streisand effect would kick in, people were gonna like boycott Metal Gear Solid 5, but this has people more excited than ever to get that title. Especially since the game mechanics are gonna be a lot more advanced, a lot more revolutionary, supposedly. And they're gonna get a lot more people in they're gonna get a wider spectrum of the mainstream fans that's gonna be a lot of numbers since the industry is growing in popularity so there's that and the thing with that is that I got a lot of friends IRL that I know for ironic shitpost memeing yeah that's kind of how weird my social circles have become and they've been saying yo I'm going to like suck another guy's dick for this game now he meant that as a joke like he wasn't really going to do anything weird like that but he's hyped for this that's what he really means to say it's like saying I'm so hungry I can eat a horse in this case I'm so hyped for this game that I'll suck a man's dick to get it that's what's up for him a lot of people have been saying that this is going to be that title and they're dying to get it. They've never been excited for any release in such a long time. Now I'm thinking, yo, Konami, you really, you really did it. You managed to turn this potential L into a win. You got a lot of people saying, well... They got that whack ass pachinko thing. I don't care. That's a distraction from the fundamental truth that Konami is getting wet with that freaking. Konami was about to get wet with fan criticism. It was about to get shot up. It was about to get murked. But somehow this has turned into free publicity for their game. The game that's going to keep the company afloat for many years to come, MGSV. Nothing else is going to do that right now. Nothing else matters that much. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. So there's that. And that's kind of the problem with video game media. They point out an obvious problem. But instead of having a good reaction to it that makes sense, they essentially make that thing more popular and more powerful. You also see this a lot with like evangelical Christian critics of media. They'll say something is really deprived and deplorable or it's too raunchy for TV and they give it free publicity. If I'm meaning it, Gamergate does this with, and I had this conversation, someone told me this in a Skype convo two weeks ago or something like that. I don't remember who it is since I talked to too many people now, but yeah, MGS, like uh, with Gamergate, when they were talking ish about Anita Sarkeesian, what happened is she got more popular, the Swipple side of the gaming spectrum really started supporting her, giving her this money, and now she's in Mirror's Edge 2, and she's probably going to dumb down the mechanics of that game, and I'm not going to be surprised with what happens with that. So yeah, free publicity. That's why I don't really think Sarki the Streisand effect really works. The way the Streisand effect is, is if you don't like the way a 
government policy is working, you pretty much boycott the investors for it, the companies invest for it. And this has become a misnomer applied to a lot of things, boycotting specifically, and it's not really effective. It's not effective because anytime you do something stupid and deplorable, you also make yourself more marketable, ironically. It's the weirdest thing ever, but that's everything I want to get my head out of, my head cleared out of. I might make another video. I already know I got a bunch of ideas in my head. It's your boy Miss Wonka 7 and Duck Say I'm Day.